when an elk comes in as a bow hunter we're calling bulls in when we're calling bulls in they think they're coming into a herd setting if you've done your job well if you're cow calling and bugling then they're coming into a herd setting so when a bull comes in and he's an experienced mature bull and he comes in you can see him they come in there they're kind of like ding 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 and they know where you are they know that distance down to the foot they know where that sound came from it's just like you and me we can hear a bull bugling and he's like he's right in that pocket right up there well they can do the same thing so he's worked in there he knows he's getting close and then you'll see him slow down and they'll start kind of they'll start kind of going like this and then the woods are silent there's nothing moving and he's going hey where is everyone i thought there was a party over here what's going on and then he sees my little four-legged friends through the weeds and you can see him kind of do this thing and then you'll watch him go oh, oh cool all right <laughs> <laughs> and it's so awesome to see it and i i remember one time uh <coughs> in Elkville we had five bulls working us at once and I had four goats and I and I always tie them up so I can at least kind of control their proximity so I can keep them in a particular area if I need to bump forward I need to bump back but I'm always close enough to where they're not calling to me because I don't like them calling to me so I have the four tied up I'm calling I got three bulls working up through this drainage and I got one down below that keeps sounding off so I kind of get in front in a position over here on these bulls, and these bulls are working up, and I'm super transfixed over here. And that's back in, I don't know if you guys remember my early films, that's when I had Duke and Mooch. And Duke was like 155 pounds soaking wet, little overhalsy, right? And he was like, he had, a, he's one that his testicle went into his stomach, so he kept his one ball for a long time. So he had these big, big horn sheep horns. He was really cool. But he was 150 pounds soaking wet. He was little, right? So I'm over here, and I'm all transfixed on this, and I kind of picked something up out of here, and I'm like, I turn around and there's a giant bull standing like five yards from Duke and Duke's just raking. <laughs> <laughs> a little goat this tall, there's this giant bull like standing over and go, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> so, so it's a really, yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool thing that they have that, they have that space to be able to see him as a comrade. So they do. The key with sneaking in on animals with goats is that goats are seen as something separate but together. So when, when, when a deer sees a goat at 400 yards, it'll snap its head up and go, you know, do this kind of thing, look for a little while, you see him relax, he'll go to eat again, and then I crawl. And I crawl until he goes Wah! like this again and looks and sees and does all this. The key is to set up your stock where you're in full sight the entire way. The second you drop out of sight and you come back up again and you're at 200 now, he goes, whoa, where'd he come from? You know, even though he only saw you at like 220 before and you just dropped into a bully. So I'll always go way out of my way to make sure I'm visible the entire way. And I almost always can get inside of 40, so bow range. And what they do is they come the rest. So I move into 40 and I post up and my goats are around me. Now I'm full face mask, I'm full camo. The only thing shown is this, and your goats will not know who you are when you put a face mask on. <laughs> so I, I have been crawling before and all of a sudden like Thorn, Thorn went, whoo, 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 what's that? And I was like, Thorn, it's me, it's me, it's me. <laughs> every time, every time. That's awesome. so yeah, they hit the oh shit button really fast. Yeah. So. And then what they'll do is they'll close the final distance into me because they're curious. And then I'm just ready to shoot at that time with my bow. Most animals I sneak in with my bow with goats are less than 20 yards. And I, I got, and I'm talking goats with saddles and panniers on, not stripped down goats that I'm just using as decoys. That's one of the reasons, if you guys don't know, our panniers all set so that your panniers can hang. We have a way we roll them up and they hang right here. And then you have a cover that goes over them that's camouflaged or blaze orange. And that's why I do it. I want that goat ready to pack out that critter. Whether I need camp gear or not, I'll have four goats with me because I want to hunt with them. And they'll have the panniers ready to go on the saddle. So these goats all have saddles on them while I'm sneaking in. So it's not like I, I got them all stripped down and I'm just, I, and I've done it with full blown panniers too. And because of the four legged and because of the horns or whatever, they just, they aren't afraid. So. So I heavily advise that you try sneaking and antelope, they see us as a fellow antelope. So I pick my antelope colored goats and I hunt in the rut and they will run from 500 yards. They'll see me from 500 yards. I'm an all four. They come in at full blast, ready to fight. 
So my main thing is with antelope that they're, they're, they come in super quick and then they'll, they'll work in and they'll loop and then when they catch their wind, they're out. But you have that time frame to shoot and they, they come running in from a long ways. So with those guys, I'll pop up on a ridge top and they just post up and know that I have a shootable position below me that's not downwind. So I'm looking for the wind to spill off, but I'll use them for that. Um, uh, there was elk, there was deer. Uh, so, so for me, one last thing that I'll tell you, when I, when I set up my camps for elk in remote backcountry, I always set up to be able to hunt for five or seven days and not beat up the bulls in my area. So when I'm doing my map research, I'm, I hunt from the bottom up. It is tempting for, because it feels like it's going to be easier to hunt top down. Top down is not the way to hunt bulls because you're always hunting against the wind. So I hunt from bottom up, I'll centralize camp, and I like to have, within an hour's walk from camp, a minimum of four, and I like five drainages. So then on a five day hunt, I only penetrate into one drainage per day, and so I maintain the population in the area where I'm hunting. I'm never pressuring my bulls out. Um, so I, that's how I hunt with them. And I either bring in a camp buddy who, who takes care of my goats, but I really miss them on setups because my goats are kind of ruddy that time of year as well because it's their normal rut too. And almost every setup, they'll rub. Um, in fact, I've called in a bull before without calling. So I went in, I set up, I knew I was kind of close to him, but I didn't know how close. I have my hunter, that was when I had a client. My hunter was out front, I set up and back, I'm kind of waiting for him, testing the wind, making sure everything's right. And it's one of the goats started raking over here and all of a sudden, I scream and I went, all right, but I'm not gonna do anything. And he worked, his geek came all the way in and he drilled him. So called him in with goats. <laughs> so don't forget, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video that you just watched. Please click subscribe and make sure you, that you leave it a comment and, and share this. Um, one of the reasons we're out here is to try to help people learn how to better take care of goats. And again, uh, we really appreciate you watching. Thank <laughs> you.